da 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 What's up, fight fans? How y'all feeling today? Um, so you saw the title, episode two. This is episode two of the martial arts history of the diaspora. Now, <clears throat> I had a lot to talk about in the first episode, and in the second, I'd like to just do it a little more streamlined. So I had to pull up my old computer and find out some of the stuff I was studying. It's really interesting when you look at things you write um, in the past and then look at things you write a couple months later. When I was writing that stuff, my knowledge of the subjects that I know now was minuscule. I'm like, shit, I'll go back and school me back then, right? But yo, it's your boy, Healer the Mind Body Coach with the Focus Bowl, boxing. Oh, boxing and MMA channel, that's what it used to be called, but I might change the name of this channel. So who we got in the building? Uh, Mr. Padzor, salute. Heel of the Mind Body Coach, oh, that's me on my other channel, which is the reason I think I should change the name of this. But yeah, you already know I'm doing this all this month. I'm going to be doing either Black History themed videos or live streams. And um, the point is, it's just, it's... It is, we really do live in a world where it's um, through the eyes of the victor. You know, the, whoever wins is the one who gets to tell the story. And that's not always the truth. And I think it's good for young black men and black women to have pride in their heritage. And the best way to know your awesome heritage is to know your history, right? Um, and in some case, the losers, even when they lose, they still try to write the history. Right, G man, what's good? What's good, family? Uh, let me just send this shit to myself. I had to go on my other computer and dig into some stuff, but I will be changing this channel name soon to Healer the Mind Body Coach. Um, got plenty of fucking content for y'all. I, I even got some uh, anime, no, 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 mangas. If you guys are into that, um, featuring black superheroes, all that good stuff. Um, can y'all hear me? Okay. Let me shut this thing down and then we get right into it. In one second there. All right. Exactly, G Man TV. Smash that like button. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Um, pull y'all up, pull up a screen share for y'all. So yesterday we spoke about combat sports in the America. Um, no, it wasn't yesterday. Shit, it was what, Monday? Uh, was it Tuesday? Whatever. On the last episode, we spoke about the history of black... Uh, excuse me, Africans in the diaspora, right? Africans in the diaspora. Um, and we spoke about the three main arts. All combat sports boils down to three martial arts, punching, kicking, and wrestling. What makes martial arts different from one another is the clothes they, they wear, the, the, um, the traditions they practice, and how much of the sweet science of the movement of the body do they know. Martial arts is the art of killing, you know, the art of destroying the body, right? Martial, war art. That's what martial arts means, the art of war. Now, there are three aspects to martial arts. There's weapons-based martial arts, which I would like to go over more weapons-based stuff. In another episode, I'll, I'll do um, the weapon history of like Black Americans. Um, I'm focusing specifically on the diaspora. Um, not that not that I got like nothing against Africa or whatnot, but I'm focusing specifically on Black Americans, Jamaicans, Brazilians. The whole basically, if you got there by ship or if you were there in chains, I'm focusing on you, right? So that's what Black History Month is for. Um, so first and foremost, uh, oh yeah, 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 the three, the three arts. It's boxing, kicking, and wrestling. 
Think about it. What's Taekwondo? I mean, you do throw punches in Taekwondo. It's either going to be that or a mix of that, right? You throw punches in Taekwondo, um, but it's it's mainly kicks. Taekwondo is mainly for its kicks, right? Boxing is the hands. Well, no other martial art compares to boxing when it comes to the hands, right? While Taekwondo kind of just perfected the feet where their hands are kind of negligible. You, you really want to mix their hands with someone else's. What the fuck? How? When, when did I get this? Hold on one second. Did I send myself? How? Oh, oh. Woo! Oh my God, look at that footwork. Oh, I got to share that with y'all. I got to share that with y'all. Woo, I got to share this with y'all. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Let me get y'all a screen share real quick. Oh, wow. Can y'all see that? Look at that footwork. These women just taught me something. And this actually plays into what I was talking about, about um, the lost martial arts, right? So on the last episode, we went over the fact that pretty much we looked at African martial arts, different styles of wrestling, such as Magba and Lamb. And then um, different styles, what you might call it, different styles of um, punching like Kandika and Dambe, and different styles of kicking like Angolo and Kipora. And then we saw those arts come to the Americas, right? Um, I named people like G.W. Offley, who was a wrestling teacher in his time, right? He was a wrestling teacher in his time. And he he taught wrestling during slavery. He taught it to a little white boy in order to learn how to, how to read. He exchanged learning for reading. And <clears throat> so he exchanged learning for reading, but this was in the 1800s, 1830s. This is before the rise of like, um, arts like catch as catch can wrestling, which led to freestyle wrestling or Olympic Olympic freestyle wrestling, collegiate wrestling. So I showed in that video how collegiate wrestling was actually something that the Europeans had learned from the Africans on their plantations. And they used to fight. They used to use these Africans, go around and make them fight for money. They would They would buy them as slaves specifically for their fighting prowess. Um, guys like Oscar Felix Janelle, um, and I, I'm giving you names here. I'm giving you actual names of people who did this. Um, what was this cat's name? A little slow today. Let me get y'all another screen share. Went over the kicking arts, went over the wrestling arts. And just a reminder, y'all go to my channel and watch this friggin' video. Because most of the stuff that's in this history video is found here, right? So we also established that. So in a nutshell, the wrestling of Africans was practiced by African Americans, even during slavery on the plantations, right? They also practice it in fighting other people in other plantations, as well as even fighting white men, right? They would take a bet. Bet your nigger can't beat my nigger. I bet you can't fuck with my nigger. Yeah, it'd be like that. And guys like Bill Richmond, right? Bill Richmond. 
Bill Richmond. Half Asian lawyer. No, I'm talking about Bill Richmond, the badass boxer. Was a British boxer, born a slave in Richmondton, Staten Island, New York. Um, although born in British America, he lived the majority of his life in, in, England, in England, where his boxing contest took place. Uh, pretty much, he, I believe he had gotten manumission from boxing, that he basically fought on plantation fights and eventually got his freedom and, and went to the UK. Right? <clears throat> so, yeah, he's in the history books. I'll probably do, uh, I'll do a video on Bill Richmond. But you got, you got other guys like uh, Tom Melon, 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 Melon. I can't spell like a Frenchman. I'm not a Frenchman. How the hell do you spell Melanois? <laughs> I can't spell Melanois for nothing. How do you guys spell Melanois? Damn, I, melon. Okay, it's got to be it, Melanoi. Someone help with my bad spelling. Okay, so I obviously can't spell the guy's name. Oh, no, 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 no. It's. He was Molin. Yeah, there we go. It's Molinar. It's not Melanois. It's Molinois. Tom Molinois. Terrible spelling. Okay. Not sure why you're showing me some <laughs> some scrawny dude. This draws. Molin. There we go. Tom Melanois. Boxer. Now he earned manumission through fighting in plantation fights. And he was pretty damn good at it. Him and his family, Zachary Melanois, and I forgot his brother's name. But that was his father, and they got up off the plantation. That was how they did it, right? <clears throat> so today, I want to focus on the Afro diaspora arts that influenced. First off, we're going to continue going through the um, the African diaspora and the different arts, and then I want to show you how those influenced other arts in the Americas, right? So we got boxing, wrestling, and kicking. The kicking, most of it looks like capoeira. So wherever you had capoeira, you had, um, excuse me, wherever you had Congo Angolans taken into slavery, you had a form of capoeira, right? So in America, what did we have? The arts of the Americas, we have, boxing we had mixed african wrestling so mixed african wrestling is mixed african wrestling is pretty much the wrestling of nigeria the wrestling of of um ghana the wrestling of central africa think about it this way you had many different groups of africans in maroon camps and and in slavery together and they did, I, I've shown you reference that they practice boxing and wrestling. Excuse me, they practice wrestling on the plantations on Saturdays, men, women, and children. I've shown you references from 1734 that show that, right? So in these camps and even on the plantation where you have Africans of, of mixed, mixed parts of Africa, they practice slightly different wrestling traditions and therefore they mix it. Right? And this happened all over the Americas, but specifically USA, right? Then we had knocking and kicking, kicking and knocking. Now, kicking and knocking eventually was appropriated and made into something else. It was watered down, perhaps even by us, honestly. 
I'm not even sure how it got so watered down. Um, but kicking and knocking, and that's why I said woo at that video. This is a point that I really wanted to drive home from kicking and knocking. Kicking and knocking became the Charleston. What the fuck? Give me one second. Kick and no kicking and knocking became the dance known as the Charleston. It was watered down, right? Now, if you guys haven't seen the Charleston, let me share it with you real quick. Um, oh, yes, that's another thing I wanted to go over. <clears throat> One thing at a time. The Charleston became a super popular dance among the white girls. You ever seen this shit? Stream live and on Shut the up. Down, oh, you're a dick. You're a dick, whatever. So yeah, it became the Charleston, named after the city of Charleston, South Carolina, which is where it was predominantly practiced, right? So knocking and kicking. It also became, it was also seen in dances like the Lindy, Lindy Hop, which I'll show you momentarily. But there's something to remember that all African dance, that the, the key thing about African martial arts is that they always include dancing and music. It's always, music and dancing is the kata. It is indeed the kata for, um, <clears throat> for uh, whatchamacallit. It's the kata for black martial arts. We don't, they don't have forms, they have dances. And this dance is related to one of them. This is the jinga for the American capoeira. That's how they would start. Now there's a video out there by, by a brother, fuck this video by the way, <clears throat> but yeah. See, they, they took it and they kind of watered it down. But I'm going to show you real knocking and kicking. I'm going to show you, the, show you the Lindy Hop real quick. Swing dancing, Lindy Hop. I think swing dancing. <clears throat> but yeah, this one. This shit is awesome, by the way. I would love to do this. <laughs> I love that part. I think we should like make a movie where a black couple in the South fights motherfuckers like that. I think that'd be a great movie. What about you? And my boy's about to do the Tatsumatsu and Go Kick. So this is the same thing that hop that happened to um this is the same thing that happened to whatchamacallit to capoeira. Capoeira got watered down. But all these dance fighting styles, check this real quick. This is a video of Maroons dancing. That's the jinga for capoeira. It's a variation of it. From there, she can drop into what's known as um, a, a, a negativa. 
the footwork, it's all relative, right? Dancing and fighting is intrinsic in African culture. This one right here, that's a, that's one I do automatically. The one that she's doing where she kind of stomps her feet. Yeah, that's also something that's seen in mosh pits. These steps right here, they're, the, they're foundational. They're, they're fundamental to like moshing, so to speak. So if I show it to you, <clears throat> so those dances in Jamaica became um, a part of a, a movement, a, a genre called ska. Ska blew up and became skanking. Um, the, the dance, the dance from ska was called skanking, right? The dance from um, ska was called skanking. Skanking blew up in the UK and skanking became a part of hardcore dancing. Excuse me. It became a part of uh, ska punk and then it found its way obviously into just punk and then hardcore punk and then into metal. I'm looking for the two step here. And I'm the best at this, by the way. You can't fuck with my two step. There you go. See? See? And then you turn it into a fight. <clears throat> Look at those steps. It's essentially a bastardization of it. And then you turn it into fights. Now, this culture actually has its roots in um, the combat, the, the kicking arts of, of Africa, the kicking and dancing arts of Africa, as I'll show you once again, and then we'll get into today's lesson. Um, can I double up? Throw down like a pro. You can't throw down like me, bro. Ah, damn it. Whatever. I guess I'll open another window. Fine. Ah, oh, fuck, that's all I want to do. Okay, what was it? Let's look at the similarity in all these videos. First, we'll start with we'll start with the culture of um, Martinique, Martinique, um, the Caribbean. They, this Catherine Dunham says this is in um, that this is in Jamaica and Martinique, but I think it's just Martinique. Right here, it says Jamaica and Martinique Fieldwork, 1936, video clip number 17. Um, I think this particular video clip only shows the work of um, of some of this uh, of the style in what is it called? Uh, not Curacao, um, Martinique, Martinique, and somewhere else. But as you can see, the tradition, and this is the, this is pretty much what the Maroons mostly did, the people who were fighting against slavery, but. Obviously, there was a time on the plantation, like on weekends and holidays, where you're able to get off, so to speak, and dance and play fight. And anyone who's a plantation fighter, th these are the people who be practicing this kind of stuff. Um, and in the book, in Henry Bibb's narratives, uh, memoirs of slavery, he talks about how that, that mainly the style of, of fighting, of prize fighting that was going on in the plantation, it was not in the nature of European boxing. That was the lesson for today, right? The lesson for today is, um, damn it, it's such, hold, oh yes, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Why, why they made the rules for boxing? The separation, yes, 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 that was it, my fault, my fault. <clears throat> so the main thing I wanna focus on today is the rules of fighting, right? Now, this is just a theory. Maybe this is just my romantic, 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 whatever. Romance, romanticization, romanticization, romanticization of the martial arts history, so to speak. But imagine in prize fighting, according to Henry Bibb, if prize fighting 
at least as far as the plantations were concerned, and these these plantation fighters actually fighting white fighters as well were coming out with their kicking and knocking style. Rules like the rule. Remember the rules. Prize fighting did they allowed anything? I can find old prize fighting videos where they're wrestling. You get me? So prize when when they made the rules of prize fighting like the Queensberry rules, fighting like a gentleman. So Europeans had something known as rough and tumble, which was they would grow their nails long. Basically, it's dirty fighting, hair pulling, uh, eye gouging, things of that nature. Um, we can look up rough and tumble. I might have some pictures of it. But essentially, if you had the people in slavery doing plantation fights, and this is them demonstrating it. Now, their their fighting arts is intrinsic. Their dancing is intrinsic to their fight. This dance, I do. I did this automatically, this shit right here. It's like it's in my soul. No one ever taught me that. And I mixed it with my martial art, right? So it's where, imagine that these, uh, apparently, according to Henry Bibbs narratives, that young black kids were being taken around to fight and that Amasa would make some money off of this kid because he was a badass fighter. They, like he bought him to fight. So imagine this. They're doing these styles of martial arts. They have their capoeira influence. This is before intrinsic, excuse me, this is before collegiate wrestling. So I'm imagining that perhaps some of these prize fighters, not all, some of these prize fighters, these black prize fighters obviously would have known, according to Henry Bibb, they did the style of knocking and kicking, especially before the Queensberry rules. So this is before Europeans would have had savat kickboxing, which when I get into later, savat kickboxing actually comes. Mm. Savat kickboxing actually comes from these African arts. So before that, Europeans had standard boxing. They didn't have these kicks. I challenge you to find me any reference of Europeans using dynamic kicking arts before 1820 France. and not going back to ancient periods. M fairly modern European period. Um, let's say, actually, during during that time, during the, from the 1500s on, find me anywhere from the 1500s between 1820 Europeans, before 1820 Europeans using any kind of dynamic kicking arts or wrestling that was not related to the wrestling practices of the Africans that they were trading, or kicking art that was not related to the Africans that they were trading, right? So I imagine that these prize that perhaps these prize fighting rules could have been implemented to take away from these martial arts. Oh, you can't use those. Oh, you can't kick. You can't hug me. You can't do these things. You got to fight like a gentleman. You fight like an animal. You fight like an N word. Right. So that's just my perspective. And I'm going to do further research into this. And that's a theory that I hold. Um, but yeah. I mean, the Gracies were notorious for changing the rules every time they lost. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that really makes sense to me. That really does. Give me one second. Let me know what y'all think about that in the comment section. And then we'll go into some actual arts. <clears throat> we'll go into a, a couple names and shit. Oh, yeah. So I was showing you how these dance forms all are intertwined, right? So we've just seen a mixture of arts from apparently Jamaica and Martinique, right? We see that the dance is intricate. They would all often get in a circle and dance in a circle and fight. They would dance fight in a circle. And this goes back as far as 1936. But this is a demonstration in 1936. This has been going on since Africa, right? So therefore, this is hundreds of years old. Watch his jinga, the guy in the white. Watch his steps. That's a, that's known as that. See see how we just touched the floor real quick. That's known as a negativa. Well, I don't fucking speak Portuguese, so I'm gonna rename that shit. Watch when he touches. See how he sweeps his foot back and he touches the floor. 
and that instrument, the barren bow. Alright, whatever. Right there, that's the nigga Chiva. So this is beautiful, but here's the thing. A lot of people think capoeira is useless because it's mostly flips. Like that's not necessarily effective or efficient for fighting. It almost takes away from the fight. See this, that's known as a jinga. And that was the, what that dude did was a negativo. Yeah, I don't need you telling me about capoeira bro. Yeah, all right, so <clears throat> see if I can find the Jenga. Now, fight dancing, right? Look at this footwork here. It's a different Jenga. It's a forward Jenga. Yeah, it's a forward Jenga. Now, there's a dude on here who shows, he talks about um, Angolo. He talks about kicking and knocking, and he's like, um, the kicking and knocking has three different forms of footwork. The flare, the jinga, and the um, that one that she just did. So if you remember the plantation stuff, then you look at this. I'll school you with these dances, bro. Now, I can, I can show you that this has a direct link to that because that stuff comes from skanking. It's an evolution of skanking, right? I don't want to give this guy any more views, but whatever. Get this shit out of my face. Melbourne Ska Orchestra. See this? That 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 ska, that's that's Jamaican culture, bro. And it's fine. You can go ahead and do your ska. You can go ahead and do your ska. I ain't got no problem with other people doing ska. Just means you love our shit. Good job. But it's just that over time, you forget your own culture. You forget your own culture and you think that it's associated with someone else. Because when I was doing the, when I was moshing, I, I told you, my family told me, dude, that's Jamaican. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah, no, it, it that's Arastamanting that brethren. Factually. Let me give you a sub there, brother. Woo! And you, that, that's the flare. That's the move that starts off the flare. And those turn into kicks. Those turn into flips. But the combat aspect of it was watered down and became more of a popular dance. And eventually, it, the combat aspect wasn't passed down. Right there. Woo! I, I can feel the kicks. I can feel the kicks coming from it. Rastaman Skank. You don't know. Mwangwamiya, Bridget. Mantani. But yeah, you can even see like the, it looks like they're about to break dance, like they're about to. It's the beginning of it, right? Now, skanking, like I said, moved from from um, from um Jamaican music. Stop. Let's see if I can find an old documentary. And see, now, now you think ska is like this UK thing because it became real big in the UK. I might actually go watch a documentary on this later. So I'm going to make a video about it later anyway. So sticking to the lesson. What happened to these great black martial arts? Well, one, boxing we still do because there's money in it, right? And as you can see, blacks are pretty dominant in boxing unless you screw them, unless you do pussy shit like Teofimo Lopez and say, who did Devin Haney fight? Oh, you pussy ass nigga, if you fought him, he'd fight you. He has 16 knockouts, coward. You have 16 fights. Who the fuck did you fight besides a hype job? 
How about you just fight him and knock him out? And earn my respect back, because I respected you before you started saying some sucker-ass shit like that. That, that suck-ass nigga Canelo. Bro, you just avoid him and get, and get another fucking belt. So kicking and knocking became the Charleston, the Lindy Hop. Um, Capoeira got watered down. Capoeira and Golo got watered down into Capoeira Hey John L, which is where when you see all them flicks and stuff, all the acrobatics in Capoeira, that's more gymnastics kind of. It's more focusing on the gymnastic acts aspect. Capoeira and Golo is more low to the ground, you know. Let me see if I can find Capoeira and Golo. And Golo, excuse me. They're much more low to the ground. It's not as flip heavy. Or at least in whatchamacallit, the original. So I learned. So I learned. Um, but yeah, either way, less it was supposed to be more combat friendly. And there was also a wrestling aspect, a grappling aspect to it. Um, the combat dance. Combat Dance of Jamaica. Respect, Virgin. Yeah. Yeah, this is still, it's a, it's a, it's um, more of a practice. It can be used for fighting, but as you can see, you see they stick to the ground a lot. They stick to the ground a lot. Woo! Aya, aya. Aya, aya, aya. Aya, aya, aya. That's a reference to the Most High. That's a reference to God. Aya, aya, aya. Nice nigga, Shiva. Yeah, so this is more friendly. You get me? Like, I'm going to make it a combat sport. Fuck that. Point is to fight. Nice. We're not gonna watch this whole thing. They use a lot of negative and they fight. See how they they're like I said, very close to the floor. They keep it real close to the floor. In one second. Now that got watered down into the, the flipping arts I just showed you. If you notice, these guys don't really stick to the floor like that. They're they're all the way in the air. Yeah, that's more flip tricks and shit. The Profession, what's good, family? CHS Combat Sports, what's up? Thanks for coming through. So, what happened to the kicking styles in America? They became dances. We can resurrect them, though. Now, the one in Jamaica became hardcore dancing, and ultimately that found its way back to the mosh pit, right? Found its way to the mosh pit. But back to the beginning. Look at what they're doing. That's a forward jinga. That's a that's a combat dance. Now watch this. Let's look up breakdance flare. The flare? 
No, it's not a flare. Uh, the dancing part, I forgot what they call it. Hmm. All right, I'll show it. I'll find it. I'll find it another way. Um, Yes, here we go. West African sword dance. I want to see that. Oh, I gotta I gotta talk to this cat right here. Yo, make sure y'all go over and subscribe to this dude. Arasa Malik. Malik. Arasa Malik. Instructional video on martial arts, aka Montu Arts, African Montu Arts. This time we're gonna be talking about footwork. And footwork is probably the best place to start whenever you karate where you have the kata. Yeah, know, exactly. The exactly. That's what the dance is for. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is take three variations and see my... I don't agree with that Montu art shit because here's the thing, bro. You might as well just speak another language. Then. We're speaking English. In English, we call it, we call it martial. But I, I get that. I get it. I get it. I don't worship either of them motherfuckers, so fuck both of them. We can just call it killing art or combat art. In your, in your, in your, um, legs. You're going to do the same movement as the, as the jinga, except it's inverted. That so watch. Instead of going back stepping, That's a jinga. That's the Brazilian jinga. The point of trying. And by the way, so from the base position, same This is a, a Brazilian jinga. Excuse me. Fuck. No, no, no. Not a fucking Brazilian jinga. This is a... I guess I could. I capoeira, capoeira jingle. Instead of going back stepping. Damn it! Show me a, show me a fucking jingle. There we go. Many different variations. I go to hit. I hate Haitian L. Haitian L should cease to exist. How they're the same thing, starting with footwork. So you can see my feet. I'm gonna be in a neutral position. With both my feet about shoulder width apart, a little bit. Then I'm going to show you this stuff in action too. I'm going to bend my knees, and this is going to be my active, ready base position. So from here, I'm going to show you the jenga. Jenga is from Capoeira, which is the Afro Brazilian Montu art. And in this, you go back, and then you go forward, back, and then you go forward, back, and you sway. This is what's yeah. called the jenga. There's many different variations. I can go into Hejanal Jenga. I can go into Angola Jenga. You know, I can do any type of Jenga where I'm just, you know, I'm just walking down the street. Yeah. I'm just standing at the corner, you know, Jenga. So Jenga. pause real quick. The Jenga, here's something important to learn. I'm going to stop the screen share for a moment. I'm going to show you the point of the Jenga, All right? So a martial arts stance, you learn 12 to 2. Put your hands up. Light this up. All right. So you learn feet together, or at least what I'm teaching, this is how I teach. Shoulder width apart, draw one back. And you're in a staggered stance now. That's how we form our stance. Right? Bottom, bottom. When you're this way, it's easy for you to be pushed over, right? This is known as a horse stance. You can get a lot of power from here. But when you think about it, I'm in, I'm in orthodox stance. Now I'm in southpaw. If you notice what I did, I did a jinga. When you go from one stance to another, you do a jinga. There we go. Then the forward version. Damn, I can't do it. I can't do it. I didn't practice. Damn, I'm still doing backwards. Fuck. I haven't practiced the forwards yet. I haven't practiced the forward one yet. Fuck. All right, whatever. I'm going to work on the forward uh, next time. <laughs> 
um, next time. But that's really what the Jenga is. It's it's switching. It's going from this stance to that stance. But primarily, as I told you, the Imbangala people, they're down here. So they have strong ass legs. Capoeira, what's it called? Capoeira um, Angola is more down here. If you have hey Janel, this shit, you're not working your legs. So imagine if this is your stance and you're always like this, you're gonna have dumb, strong legs, right? So you'll find them here. You don't wanna come up and then you fall back into a nigga chiva. And then, so then there's the kickback. Light on our feet, it's in our culture. Yeah, so let's continue learning. What else we got? Screen share real quick. So let's go back to it. And make sure you go subscribe to the brother too. triangles all of these movements that's the shape that you want to put, uh, keep in your mind when you're doing footwork for these arts triangle so put my front foot on the tip of the triangle to the base exactly so as you can see when you when you're in a triangle you're in a boxing stance that's the stance you know normally i would have a stick a machete and here's where i'm flowing this is my movement right so instead of doing this i'm going back forward in the base I'm going back into the base, forward one step, back into the base, forward one step, back into the base, forward one step. And that's so, just an example of how it's used, that's so you can get into a rhythm of slicing, attacking, and going back. Retreat and defending. Defending yourself. Exactly. Your block. So that's the second form of footwork. Third form of footwork is actually from a dance, and it's from a dance, dance many people know, uh, African-American break dancing. So in break dancing, they kind of have their own jingle, if you will, where it's a base movement that all of the flares and the and the and the back flips and the special type flips they come from that. that it's a gathering of momentum. Back to. The same way in Capoeira with the jingle is the base for every single kick. Same thing in break dancing. It's called the up rock. I think I'm saying that correctly. Top rock. Top rock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Nicola because he knows more about break dancing. All right, so the top rock is pretty much like the fall suit, except you're just putting more, you're just restyling it, you know what I'm saying? You See that? Like, do whatever. It's just a dance move, it's just. It's you can go to spinning so kicks, from, music, spinning kicks music. from there. I gotta work on that one. Salute mo boxing. Hmm, fuck. You can go to spinning kicks from there, right? What is it? Ah, damn it. I'm just so used to the other one. So if I start staggering. <laughs> yes, I like that one actually. But you gotta hide, see, if you hide those dances, if you hide those dances, there we go, there we go. If you hide those dances with the footwork, excuse me, if you hide those dances with the punches, I'm just so used to the capoeira jinga that I always end up doing the doing their version instead. But I'm going to show you some Jamaican versions. All right, so we go back to 
these beautiful ladies. Watch their footwork now. Now you'll have a better understanding. I do something similar to what she does, but this is maroon culture in Charlestown. I play the music. All right. That one right there, that's a two step that they do in Brooklyn, in the Bronx. Whenever you're about to do, whenever you're about to mosh, if we look at more mosh pit videos, they do that two step, right? So let's look over mosh pit videos again. Let's check this out real quick. Just watch the footwork. Yeah, this kid wants the mosh so bad. There you go. Look at it. There you go. It's just much more exaggerated. Watch the kid in the black when he does his, his hand swinging back. So, so if you notice, he did this, right? Why can't I find Marsh anymore? I need music, I need music. He threw his hands back like this. And he threw his hands back like that, right? I'll show you a video of them doing that exact same dance. Let's go back one more time. There it is. Roots and culture. Hey, Mo Boxing, you remember Ska? Tell me you remember Ska. You're from the UK, right, Mo? Skanking originally came from Jamaica. Ska and skanking, big things. See if I can find that scene where he does that exact move, the throwback. You guys have, oh, I didn't even show you guys a screen share. Fuck, my bad. There we go. So you'll see a scene where he throws his hands back just like that. Watch this guy right here. The swing back. Yep, there we go. The back hand, the, the back swinging. And there's a place in there for it, you know? Right there. See the hand swinging backwards? Hold up. Watch the guy in the black hoodie. There it is. He's actually pretty good. He's actually pretty good. 
And of course, we got a black dude up in the front. The two step ain't bad. I mean, they still not fucking with me. I just need the right, the right music, and they ain't fucking with me. So, how does this relate to the combat sports? Yeah, in summary, pretty much what happened to the the combat sports across the diaspora that included dancing is that they turned into dances and their combat aspect was faded out, was phased out after a while. Um, capoeira is more capoeira hegenel, more dancing. Uh, kicking and knocking became the Lindy Hop, the Charleston, which eventually found its way into combat dance. Combat dance in Jamaica became ska, skanking, ska and skanking, which eventually became um, ska punk, ska punk skanking, which eventually became hardcore dancing, and eventually found its way into metalcore. Right. So it's now associated with metal and hardcore, right? And this is the same thing, like right here, metalcore, eventually became metalcore. Um, slam dancing, no, no, not slam dancing, hardcore, right? But at least in Brazil, they still have a, a um, more of a, a tie to it. And that's because of the sheer amount of black people in, in Brazil. It's like the largest concentration of Africans outside of Africa, right? Now, here's the next place that it went. And this shit just boils my blood every time I, I, I study this. This is, um, what is it called? Savit. Uh, Savit's whack. Savit is whack. I'm not even called it Savat. Savit. So it's French kickboxing invented in 18, and they'll, they'll make no mention Right. Let's read about Savat real quick, and then I'll show you some pictures, and then I'll, and then you tell me where Savat came from. Savity. Let's look at some Savat moves. Okay, Savit, also known as Boxe France, Savat Boxing, French Kickboxing, French Foot Fighting, is a French kickboxing combat sport. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, <clears throat> uses hands, see, it uses elements of English boxing with graceful kicks. Uh, only foot kicks are allowed, unlike some Muay Thai, which uses knee and shins. Savat, is a French word meaning old shoe or boat. Pay close attention. Savat is a French word for old shoe or boat, referring to old boat shoes, right? So Savat takes his name from French old shoes, heavy footwear, especially used, especially the boots used by French military, French soldiers, right? In the War of 1812, off the coast of the port of Marseille because that's where it was invented. In the South, especially in the Port of Masai, sailors uh, developed fighting involving high kicks and open hand slaps. Open hand slaps, okay. So high kicks, so sailors, let, let's go over it. Let's go over the facts. Sailors, sailors in Marsili, sailors in Mars, whatever you wanna call it, I don't care how to spell. Um, sailors in Marseille, Slap, slap boxing, and kicking, right? 1812, War of 1812 to 1820. So it was actually fully, it was, the first school was built in 1820 in Marseille. Palm strikes, le bofe, le bafi, whatever you want to call it. Stick fighting, at some point, le cane and le baton, stick fighting was added, right? Pay close attention. Man, fuck France. I would try not to like get mad at other people and like this people's culture and whatnot. But if I love black people so much, I have to say it. But then again, Africans are kind of hoes. They kind of gave away their shit. But can't help what was stolen. You can only tell the truth. And if you're mad at me, make me apologize. Fight me. <clears throat> Stick fighting. Stick fighting was added at some point. Le Beton. All right, jerk. Okay, since since you want to do it this way, 
stick fighting was out of you. You don't want to mention the African influences, right? So about techniques. Okay, they get they get their boxing from the English, but they used to do slaps. Remember that they used to do slaps. Port of Marseille. I mean, I don't have to bullshit. Because you can go out and get a book yourself. I'm trying to find the kicks that they use. They use some of the kicks where they touch the floor and they spin off the floor and whatnot. Let me see if I can find it real quick. And for the idiot who made a video, who keep making makes for the idiots who keep making videos that um, Africa there was no slave trade and Africa is a myth. Please explain to me how Capoeira got from Angola. But, nigga, we have the people's name. Oh my god. Hmm. Trying to find the exact page. Angolo. Whatever. Whatever. You guys can go out and get this book right here. I'll show it to you. And this is where I get a lot of my information from. So it's not just me making up some theories. This is the book, right? Fighting for honor. Um, now, it doesn't specifically say that Savat was like, oh, 100% it comes from it. But what this book talks about is it talks about how in the 1800s, well, France had territory in Africa and still does. Territories where, okay, Martinique. Let's do it this way, Martinique, right? That's that. Those videos I just showed you, they come from Martinique. This is Martinique. Martinique, that's a French word. La Ja, that's French. Agia dame damai la Ja, right? They... They're Afro, they're Africans taken from uh, Central Africa uh, by the French, right? Now, that's Martinique. So Martinique has a tradition of foot fighting, of fighting with your feet. So the people who, who were your slaves were famous foot fighters. Now, here's the thing. In, in TJ Deshi Obi's book, he explains that he gives the name of a dude named... Of a, of a chef, what he said was that in the 1800s during wartime, especially in maritime cultures, was the only time that blacks were fairly on the same social level, if you will, as blacks, because there were blacks who were, who were in the war and there were blacks who were primarily, um, they served as uh, cleaning staff on the ship, um, like cooks. There was, there was a chef named, I can't remember his name. It was some weird ass name. But this guy was known for having a bunch of different African arts. And he was like a champion of headbutting, where they would get on all fours and just slam their heads into each other. Ah, I forgot what they called him. It was a weird fucking name. Let me see if I can find it in here. But it talks about how um, on board, it, from the port of Marseille, you had a bunch of Africans who worked on board the ships. And it was documented that Frenchmen would escape from their regiment during downtime to go while they were like while they were in Africa to go seek out fights in Africa to go learn their arts specifically in Africa now it's no coincidence it's no coincidence that this happened right after the war of 1812 and it, and sailors brought it back and they had slapping in it hold on hold on did we not go over kandika slap boxing which is an african art Kandika is predominantly slap boxing, right? So we have slap boxing from Africa. We also have the foot fighting from Africa in territory where the French ruled, right? Now, let's go over right here. In another place where the French ruled, look at this. This plate representing a cudgel match between English and French Negroes. So your slaves used to kick and knock 
excuse me, they used to practice foot fighting. They also practice stick fighting. And the, the pussy hole who named this cudgeling, I hope you burn in your fucking grave, you piece of shit, because they didn't call it cudgeling. That's what you call it. Sorry, I get so super defensive. But man, that shit hurts my heart. It truly hurts my heart. So we have references of Africans who were enslaved to the French practicing foot fighting. French vessels, African slaves on French vessels, uh, excuse me, French ships. And I encourage you guys to get this book. I'm just trying to find the page. Great Dismal Swamp. Whatever, just go buy the books by TJ Deshiobi, right? DT in the building, salute. Says I was working, was just uh, listening, couldn't chat, no worries, glad to have you here. So African slaves um, on French ships, 1812, 18, let's see, prior, prior to 1820, we also, see, they practice stick fighting, foot fighting, and it goes back to Africa hundreds of years. So we know that these people did it first, but we also have on the ships, it said that the way that they used to pass time is that on the ships they used to box. And it wasn't so basically the Frenchmen who were practicing savat on these ships, they were not they were not just French. They included the crew who were working there. And when it was downtime, they would get drunk together and they would fight. And if I can find the name of this man, it says that this dude he was sought out because he was a champion and he was known for knowing different African arts. So what he 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 had a headbutting art. He had some box. No, excuse me. It is said that Africans were taught boxing on the on these ship, and they exchanged kicking and boxing, which is interesting because one of my earliest sparring partners, he was he was a very good boxer, a uh, white guy, very good boxer. And at the time, I only knew how to kick. So we exchanged knowledge. He taught me how to box. I taught him how to kick. I whooped his ass in a boxing match, though. Big motherfucker. Hear that, Mike? I'll whoop your ass. I'll whoop your punk ass. Clack to New York. Fuck you up, nigga. Me and this dude would fight every day. We work, We used to work in the same gym, so every fucking day we got to pop it. Every fucking day. But yeah. Um. So basically, they took the arts and they called it something else. They called it savat, old shoe, boat shoe, because you learned it on the boats. On those boats, we have records that there were Africans on those boats. Africans from places like Central Africa, Central and South Africa, and even North Africa, where you find styles of foot fighting, stick fighting, and um, whatchamacallit. So foot fighting, stick fighting, and slap boxing. I just named three arts. Slap boxing. Actually, I just named four arts. Slap boxing, and what was the other one? Um, foot fighting, slap boxing. Uh, stick fighting. Damn, what's another one? I forgot. Headbutting. Whatever the case. French territories where they had these things. Well, Ladja and Agia in Martinique proves that in French territory, they had a group of people who were enslaved to them, who practiced these arts and even fought with them and in certain cases used them in rebellions to win. So the French had encounters with foot fighters who were excellent at it before 1820, extensive exposure, even in Haiti as well. So in Haiti, I think it's called Grima. I don't remember what it's called in Haiti. That might be Colombia. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, so they had exposure to it. They also had exposure to the stick fighters in Dominique. Right. And we've seen that they from this picture, from this picture, we've established that, hey, they made them uh, they made them do it essentially as a sport. See, cudgeling match. It's a match between English and French Negroes. They had them their niggas fighting each other. So you had your niggas fighting each other with this art. And then eventually you took it and made it into your own art. And then you, you did what colonizers do. You made it your own. And then you're like, all right, now we're going to call it something else. 
took it and renamed it. So screw Savat, screw its practitioners. I'll whoop your ass in a kickboxing match. Put money on it. This is a call out. Oh, by the way, I went on what's his name's page, uh, Pussy Drunk Boxing. I went to his page. I sent him a super chat. I said to him, hey, me and you on the undercard of Devin Haney versus Tiafimo. And Lopez Sr. was on that. This motherfucker just ignored my super chat. No smoke wanted. No smoke wanted. But yeah, um, so that's Savat, right? Screw Savat. Fight me. What's this? Latin Ronin. Okay, so now I want to go over something else. I want to study this later. Latino Ronin. I'll study that later. Okay, so let's go into the different places. Ew. We go to the different countries and the different arts that they had. Um, so we went over America. They had kicking and knocking. We still got boxing because there's money in it. And there's mixed African wrestling. Um, I feel like we should revive a heritage of mixed, mixed African wrestling. I just showed you what happened to all these arts. They became these different dances. But we can revive it. Like that brother, Asara, Asara Malik. Asara Malik, he's bringing that back, right? So in Brazil, we obviously have capoeira. I hope not, Mo Boxing. I, I, I definitely don't want to do that. That shit scares me. I mean, that's that's one thing that you should think about with martial arts. And that's why if you ever see me get, if you happen to see a video or, or some shit, if anything comes out where I don't fight somebody back, it's because, dude, I don't want a street fight. I'll fight you in a ring. Because if you kill somebody in the streets, bro, you're going to jail. You know? So definitely don't want to murk anybody with no fucking street with no fucking kicks. Not trying to kill nobody. Although in I think it's what state is it? Oregon? It might be Oregon or Seattle where it street fights are allowed. Like if you two want to fight, the cops will stand there and let you let you fight it out. Street fight. Just fine. Yeah. So Brazil has capoeira. Um I think that can be brought back, I, but uh, worth it. I don't know if there was a, like wrestling arts. It's tempting, man. I'm not a fan of street fighting. If I ain't getting paid for it, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Fighting is for real. I used to, man. I used to do a lot of street fighting. I got hurt, and when I when I started fighting pro, basically I got injured. Shit piles up. You feel me? But if you want the smoke in the ring, I'm I'm all I'm, I'm with it all day. I'm your Huckleberry. BFTB is live, actually. Okay, so Brazil got Capoeira. Now, what else we got? Jamaica had a few martial arts, and they still do. And if things work out the way that I want them to, I will be building martial arts for the Maroons of Jamaica. I'll be reviving our martial arts tradition, right? So as far as legend goes, right? I've never actually, I've never witnessed Angolo in Jamaica, but I've seen the dances. I've seen, so there's some sort of combat kicking dance. Now, from what I've read, it's called Warwick, right? Warwick. Warwick, which means strong leader or something like that. The combat dance, combat kicking dance. But it also has sticks. Hmm, that's, that's a common thing, ain't it? Sticks and kicking. Sticks and kicks. All right, let me open up. And if y'all want to support the channel or support the building of a Black Republic in Jamaica, the Republic of the Maroons, please donate. Hit up donor donor uh hit up donor box. Is that all of it? No. Oh no 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 no. That's not the link. Hit up donor box. Donations will go towards the campaign of a maroon leader. I actually got to update this and put a video in and show you pictures of the place. 
Um, but if he gets elected, we'll see real change in my hometown in Jamaica. Um, we're trying to become a recognized republic, meaning it's it'll be its own country within Jamaica because we've had self-governing rights since since what since the 1700s. Well, actually, even before the 1700s, but at the end of the first Maroon War. Um, and we want to maintain our independence and be recognized as a nation. So your donation will be going to the campaign of Colonel Wallace, right? And I'll put up a video for him later. So donations greatly appreciated. Or you can hit me up in the Cash App. When you donate, I will be giving you something, either sending you focus balls or I'll be your trainer virtually. I'll send you my virtual training program and all that good stuff. But it depends on how much you donate. Right now, um, back to the lesson, and we're going to get into a little bit of boxing. So I didn't mean to spend so much time on this, but sometimes it, it, the flow is, just isn't right. Um, went over those dances. All right, so I, I think we can move on from the kicking part. Damn it. Hmm. Fuck, I was going to show you guys something. Oh yes, that's what that's what it was. Uh, memory is terrible today. I, I think, yeah, I think I need to sleep more. Maybe I'm just dehydrated. Okay. This is what I was, what I was looking for. Um, One second, y'all. Okay, here we go. Screen share. And we'll explore these arts together. Can y'all see that? Okay. It's a list I made. Uh, actually, it's a list I stole some while back. But <clears throat> I'm going to add them to my list. So Jamaica had Warwick, which is a combat dance. Um, combat dance. Let's see. Dance kicking. Dance kicking and sticks. Um, there's an art allegedly called Banga. Mangarang, Mangarang, which is close quarters combat. Close quarters combat, and one day I'll, I'll, hmm, I can't say I'll teach it to you because I've never actually seen a Mangarang, but I do understand close quarters combat, and I have been sitting down and, and writing a list of moves and techniques and a tradition that if I do get into the right position, um, I will make it a national sport for Jamaica, right? Um, but I don't want to give too much away yet. <clears throat> then there's obviously boxing in Jamaica as well. And there's maroon wrestling. There is a culture of maroon wrestling. Of course, it's more, it's more like trying to revive the maroon wrestling culture. Terrible spelling. Since last August, the Jamaican Wrestling Federation has um, has set up a wrestling camp in Maroon community of Charleston, uh, Charlestown, Portland. Maroon wrestlers from Scott Hall and St. Mary and Moortown, also in Portland, are now participating in the camp. So no one from my town? That's all right. I'll go back and set up. I'll set up my town. And I don't see Maroon wrestlers to fight in Canada. A word? How do they do? Ten wrestlers have been selected from the Maroons. So the, the indomitable Maroons. So Maroon wrestling is alive and well. That's one still one thing that's still big in, in Jamaica. Maroon wrestling and boxing. Now, what else we got? Jamaica. Um, fuck. Brain fart. Cuba. So in Cuba, they have something known as Juego de Mani. Juego de Mani. Juggo. Juego de Mani. 
<laughs> I don't know what I just clicked on, damn it. I know I just saw a while ago. Uh, okay. So, Juego de Mani is a lot like Capoeira. Again, more proof that anywhere Central Africans went, you found this dance fighting kicking art, right? Juego de Mani. But they use a little more stomping action instead. Come on. Okay, stop. There we go. It's very similar to Capoeira. They call it the game of money. And they also use machetes in it. So there are levels to it, right? So combined martial art. So it's actually money is a is a combination of maroon martial arts. And when I say maroon, I mean escape people who escape slavery. Right? So Juego de Mani, often simply called Mani or Mani, sometimes referred to as Bale de Mani or Bambosa. Bale, Bale de Mani, dance, dance of Mani? The dance of Mani, is that what that means? Yeah. Is a combined martial art and, and dance, exactly. Yeah. Dance that was developed in Cuba by Africa. <sighs> Okay, no, it was not developed in Cuba, dude. None of them are developed there. None of them are developed there. Its roots is in Congo, Angola. There you go. And its culture is kept alive today by the by folkloric groups. Practitioners are referred to as Maniceros, right? So yeah, um, it it was the ones that were doing the rebellion, to be honest, that really preserved the art. Because they use the art in their fighting. Now, to the best of my knowledge, Mani uses a blood clot machiette. War games. Yeah, war games. Game of war. That's what Mani means. Game of war or war dance. Exactly. If we're going by that, then Jamaica has a bunch of war dances. See, as I said, martial arts is, or, or, martial arts can be broken down into three categories for the most part, right? Um, number one... Number one is using the weapon. Number two is empty-handed arts. Number three is, what is number three? Um, st strategy or things that are beyond the physical. Um, yeah, strategy, like stealth combat, um, spying. Spying is a part of martial arts because martial arts is war. It is the art of war. So gathering intelligence, being able to gather intelligence or to manipulate people and things for in the context of war is a part of the martial arts. Um, in that sense, there are also spiritual martial arts such as um, Maoli or Mayo, right? My Mayo. Yeah, Mayo. Check this out. Mayo is an Afro-Jamaican spirituality. It developed via the creolization of African religions during slave in, slave, during the slave in America, slave era in Jamaica. Um, it incorporates ritualistic magic, spiritual possession, and dancing. Unlike Obia, it focuses, um, it's, it, it practice focuses more on the connection of spirits with humans. Over time, Mayo began to be meld with Christian practice and created the religion and tradition known as revivalism. Today, the term Mayo is supposed to describe the state of being possessed by a spirit. Now, here's the thing, Mylist, maroon Mylist that I've heard of, I've never witnessed this shit. Dopimana, them crazy sitting there. Supposedly they would do a dance and they'd be able to either get possessed by a spirit or do the dance and capture the spirit of the dead. Capture ghosts and use them for your bidding. That's a form of martial art, bro. Spiritual martial arts. Next thing you know, nigga shoot Hadoukens and shit. <laughs> Apparently, Nanny of the Maroons, they, they thought she was, was like superhuman or invincible. And we find these stories all over, all, all over where you find Maroons, where people thought they couldn't die or some shit because they displayed like superhuman abilities. Nanny got shot and they were like, bro, this chick healed and she walking around like nothing happened. Could have been herbs and stuff like that. Gregory X in the building, salute. So I know my man Gregory is not a fan of this stuff, right? Hey, they got a dance in Jamaica, Gregory, um, and it's 
it, it's where you can possess people by dancing or you can capture ghosts. I've never seen this stuff, but it, it's it's alleged. And um, the great nanny, the Maroons. Auntie Nanny. Nanny of the Maroons. She was said to be able to do some crazy stuff. They said that she could fly or she might be able to turn invisible. Right? And she was a she was an amazing warrior. So they said she carried around 12 knives. She carried a belt with 12 knives. Now she had a husband. Apparently she was like a queen or he was a prince or something like that. Abdu or Adu. But I, I never hear of him fighting. Her brother is my forefather. Now I've never heard of him doing that sort of stuff, but they said that she was a priestess. So she had all sorts of magical rituals. She got shot in the ass by a black dude. Um, it's, it's fucked up because she used to free people off the plantation. She's, uh, she's like a crazier version of Harriet Tubman. She would free people off the plantation and basically some of them niggas shot back at her. They got paid to shoot back and allegedly, allegedly she died in 1733 was not possible because she signed the treaty of, um, whatchamacallit, oh, she signed the treaty in 17, 1738, so she was clearly alive, but in Jamaican like legend, she was shot in her ass and she wiped the blood on her chest and pretended to be dead, but the story went that you know she was walking around like the next day or something, they were like, bro, how did you heal so fast? So, legends of her having some magical powers is abundant. Anyway, Juego de Mani, Game of War, right? The dance, they have their dances. Oh, let's see. Juego de Mani is related to Brazilian capoeira in its African roots and is derived from Congo Angola culture, right? Um, it means game of war. Coco Bali, yeah, I remember that. Coco, Coco Bali, is that how you say it? Um, a version, let's see. Curacao has a version and Puerto Rico has its own Mani called Coco Bali. I've never seen it, but. We can put that down. So pretty much anywhere you had um, blacks going to slavery, we had our own martial arts. These are their names, and they're more potent than any other martial art. Because all martial art boils down to punching, kicking. Gregory says, I always maintain an open man. Um, go to Benin if you want to experience the bazaar. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, man, I've I've heard of some shit over there. But even in Jamaica, like I, I used to see ghosts all the time as a kid. All the time I saw. As a kid, I saw a ghost all the time, bro. No joke. And my grandma was like walking through the house, cleansing the place with the blood of Christ and whatnot. I remember one time, as a matter of fact, I'll share a story with y'all real quick. Y'all want a story? Let me know if y'all want a ghost story. Okay, so money may also be used with such weapons as a cane and staff. So here we go again. Here's my proof. So money is like capoeira because its parent is Angolo, right? So it's dance kicking. That's what it is. Money is dance kicking, just like capoeira. Now you got that, but they also use sticks, stick fighting. Hmm. Oh my God! The French form, the French art of savat is now looking like a ripoff of every single black art that came to the Americas. Right? They also have stick fighting, although not as gymnastic as capoeira hegenel. See, I told you in the beginning, it is more similar to capoeira angola. Now, as I said in the beginning of this, that all these arts came from um, central Central Africa. And wherever they went, they took this art with them. And Capoeira Hegenel was the attempt to sort of make Capoeira more mainstream and take away the African aspect of it. Because Hegenel or regional just meant like, oh, the authentic Brazilian Capoeira. The authentic Brazilian Capoeira. To, to make it more, more um, Brazilianized, so to speak. But as you can see, Mani with the same roots, because it, it didn't have that change that Capoeira Hegenel experienced, it has it has its roots. It's more like um, it's more like uh, um, Angola. 
So then, aka see into Lagia, aka Damai or Maoli from Martinique and Guadeloupe. So they eat, they have it as well, right? Martinique and Guadeloupe. And those are French territories. So again, we find the French with the same arts. How come the French are practicing the same arts, just calling it something different? That's what appropriation is. So they have La Agia, right? Or it goes by a bunch of names. Agia. Dan, no, Dan Mai, Dan Mai, Dan Mai, right? Dan Mai. Now they also use sticks and machetes as well. These are some of their, yeah, see, including the machete and double machete, knives, oh, wow. Knees and palm, forearms, knees and palms. Each fight ends with sweep and take, uh, ends in a sweep, takedown or grappling maneuver. As I told you, they had grappling to begin with. Are we now starting to see the pattern? These, these African arts are punching, kicking, and grabbing, adding dancing, and um, music. So Cuba, they had a grappling aspect to it. Of course, it would end when you get to the floor. So let's see. The music utilized in Juego de Mani is that of Palo Monte, or simply Palo, or Afro-Cuban and Afro-Cuban religion, right? One of the most popular Mani songs is Vamos a la Guerra si, la, 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 si Mani. We go to war. We go to war. I want to hear that song. I want to hear that song. We'll look that up. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do a documentary on each of these. Now... <clears throat> which influenced non-combative, see? Competitive male dancing, see? Which influenced non-combative social dances that were created in Cuba, such as Romba, Colombia, um, wrist covers. They used, they used, the sticks used is about the thickness of sugarcane, sugarcane stalks, which made the traditional dance. So they used knives and double machetes, which is similar to Kalinda which is in Trinidad. Right. Let me check my references real quick. Uh, Curacao, they had one called Coco, Mac, Coco Macaku, right? The walking stick, Coco Macaku, was in fashion in Curacao in the early 20th century in addition okay so this one seems, seems to be new in addition to being used as walking stick the coco macau was used as a defensive weapon and for cultural and sportive activities among these stick dancing stick fighting and the tambu game blood for the drum thus reports okay I'm going to read this book. The, uh, it's also mentioned by Father Paul Brenneker in his series, Sambubu. See, as in the old times, uh, as in the old times, practically every man went out with a stick. Yeah, I heard that this is true in Africa. They, they always walked around with a stick. Um, the development of the game of sticks was obvious, um, according to Brenneker. The game of sticks was not bound for seasons or festivals and in no form and in former days used to be played on Sunday exactly, approximately four o'clock in the afternoon. So I noticed that that everywhere, even, even in the Americas during slavery, they would practice on weekends. Saturdays was prize fighting. Sundays was like kind of like casual wrestling where men and women um, wrestled on the plantation. So Guadalupe. So they have a stick fighting too. They have stick fighting too. Maoli. Mayolet is stick fighting martial art from yeah, Guadeloupe. It developed from Danmai. Sovellana, Sovellana, Guadeloupe stick fighting art in Guadeloupe. They got a bunch of stick fighting arts. So Jamaica and Machiet, you know, someone use Machiet. Martinique, Trinidad, they got Kalinda. Um, 
Trinidad stick fighting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's a predecessor of Capoeira. Okay. Hmm. Kicking and knocking. I know I had a few more in here. Okay, I guess I didn't. Change my name from Timmy to Jerome. <laughs> All right, so Guadalupe, Puerto Rico. I forgot what Puerto Rico was called. Oh, it's called Cocoli. Cocoli. I, I would propose that we bring back all of these martial arts under under like a, a name that kind of represents the diaspora, right? But yo, I think I'm gonna wrap this one up right now because BFTV's on and um what are you doing this for an hour, right? Hour is usually good. But yeah, main thing to take away from today that is that um pretty much 1820 you had an art called Savat which is directly related to um, all the arts that you find in the diaspora, which is kicking, uh, dance kicking and stick fighting. Uh, let me see if Grima was in Haiti. I think Grima was in Haiti. Or Colombia. Yeah, it's in Colombia, my fault. And that's machete fighting. Afro-Colombians utilizes machetes. Yeah, the deadly art of machete. And uh, Jamaica, it's Glima. Ah, uh, my fault, Glima. And as you can see, Glima. Oh, whoa, 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 no, never mind. That's something else. No, it is Grima. I'm not talking about this shit. Never mind. Not Glima. Grima. It is Grima. Colombian Grima. Okay. Yes, yeah, machete fighting and stick fighting. And of course, there's always the dancing aspect. Um, I don't know if there was kicking like that, but it's to be understood that um, <clears throat> the kicks came from from when you have something in your hands. When you're stick fighting or your or your um whatchamacallit, or your sword fighting. When your hands are busy, you you um you use your feet. So quick ghost story before I wrap this up, right? <clears throat> if y'all want to hear this one. <sighs> Jamaican ghost story. Um I was like what? I was eight, maybe I was less than eight, I'm probably like six or seven. And um <clears throat> I used to sleep next to my grandma, right back at, back in Jamaica, and I woke up one night, looked over. Grandma's not in bed, so I go out. I go out into the living room, and I see her sitting down, looking outside. Now we had what's known as a grill. Now, if you guys don't know what a grill is, let's see if I can find a grill for y'all. You guys know what a grill is? Grill doors, like, a, yeah, yeah, that's a grill. So we had a grill, um, something like this, right? And I'm sitting down. Now I see her sitting down and looking outside through the yard. So because the living room, yeah, this is probably a little more like it. Um, I'm looking for like uh, Jamaica, yeah. I'm gonna find something. Yeah, here we go. This is perfect. Jamaica till I die. Real crime or imaginary? Just want the picture. So essentially, I'm sitting in. So she see how you see how you can see inside the house through here. You can see directly in it. There's a chair, like right. She's sitting down and she's looking out the grill. She's sitting on a chair, and I go to sit on her lap, and I'm looking through the grill and I'm seeing outside and shit. 
and I see I see like blue smoke, like blue fog or some shit. And someone is I see like someone pull up wearing a wedding dress and she's opening up. She opens up the gate and I'm thinking to myself, so I'm sitting there looking at the grill. I'm like my grandma's lap and I'm like, who the fuck is coming into the yard this late at night in a wedding dress? And she starts walking up, up to the, up to the yard, through the yard, up to the grill. And it's just somebody in a, like a wedding dress, face covered, everything. And I'm holding on and I'm like, what the fuck? And she gets closer and closer and I'm petrified, petrified with fear. My hands were stuck. You see in the movies where like, oh, this dude is scared, like dumbass, get out the way. Dude, that thing is real. When you're scared, scared, you're frozen. So I'm there as a kid and I'm stuck. I'm looking at this thing. And my grandma's trying to pull me off of the grill, like, let's get the fuck out of here. And the lady comes up to the up to the grill and she takes off her veil. And it's it's a decaying face. I kid you not, it is a decaying face. And she goes over to the other side. Like she reaches in to grab me, and my grandma gets me off. She reaches at me, and then she goes through the other side and reaches through the other side of the grill to try and catch me. And I don't remember anything after that. I just remember feeling a slap, like an intense slap. And I woke up and I'm like, I'm in the bed. And I'm like, okay, bad dream. Like that shit felt real. So the next day, grandma's out in the yard and I go up to her. I'm like, I had the craziest dream, grandma. We were by the grill. And she was like, that wasn't a dream. You were pissing your pants. I told you dumbass to let go. You were, you were sitting there petrified. I'm like, oh shit. She was able to finish the story of, of what happened. So that's how I knew it wasn't a dream. I don't like, dream, Reggie, you piss your pants. <laughs> but yeah, there was a lot of a lot of crazy shit at grandma's house. But nobody, no ghost wants to fuck her grandma. She had the blood on her side. But yo, um, I appreciate y'all coming through and chilling with me. I'm gonna drop some more content. I'm probably gonna switch the subject tomorrow. Um, I don't really want to belabor the same points. So if I don't have anything new to talk about, I probably won't go live. Leave a comment on the video if you want me to pick a specific, if you want, if you want a specific topic. You can also hit me up in the Cash App and request a black history topic or martial arts topic, right? And if you want to support the development of a black republic in Jamaica, the Republic of the Maroons, um, y'all can head over to DonorBox to support. Colonel Wallace in the election in Jamaica because he is pushing towards getting us to be our own country within Jamaica, right? And that link is right there. Anyway, salute to the mighty LDBC. Salute to everyone who came through. Smash that like button or dislike if you a hater. Just let me know you out there. Peace.